everyone, welcome back to our show. I'm so grateful to have you all back. Today, we are back with another episode of Accountant Scandal with a very special guest as an ambassador from Wage Management in Cooperation. So, before inviting the guests, let me give you guys a little bit of background information about that company. Waste Management Incorporation was founded in 1968 by Martin Dugomani, which are owned by Wei Huizanger and then Ben Rock in North America. By that time, they haven't announced the company publicly yet. Just three years later, in 1971, Waste Management Incorporation went public. The company is divided into four geographic groups, which are the Midwest, Southern, Western, and Northeast. The company main services are related to the management like traditional wages, collection and transfer, and they recover the resources and create renewable energy. They also perform recycling and deposit services, and also they remove the methane gases from landfill facility to use in electric generation. So from 1971 to 1985, the company revenue grew at a phenomenal rate. Say more than double in the following three years, and by 1985, say exceed two billion dollars. But one of the co-founder, Wei Huizhenger, left the wage management in 1984, and he went on to found Blockbuster and Autonation. Huizhenger's career continued to grow up even after leaving wage management in cooperation. After he left the company. Another co-founder, Dim Bangtra, chose the path of financial statement of fraud. Between the year 1992 to 1998, which management was found to have one of the most remarkable accounting fraud situation of all the time. So, isn't it interesting how the most profitable company came to deal with that situation? What kind of activity creates such a fraud? To answer all of those questions, we have invited six special guests to the show. So, without further ado, let's welcome our special guests to get to know more about the scandal. But before that, let me get back to my seat. First of all, thanks everyone for being here. So let's start with Miss Kins. Seems like it was such a safe place for investment, and why did the company do such a fraud and activities? As we all know, the company want to expand their profit and decrease their expenses. The same goes for waste management. Until 1990, the company was doing great and the stock price was growing at a growth rate of 30% a year. However, the chief officer could not justify with their growing rate and wanted to expand faster. So in order to meet their target, to attract more investors, they started to do fraudulent activity and overstay around $1.7 billion of earnings in their financial statement. Wow, there's a lot of money. You know what? I'm kind of curious about something, and I believe that the audience also will want to know, like, how did they hide this amount of money on the balance sheet? And earlier, the company started to understate the expense and overstate the profit. The company biggest assets are garbage truck and lamphy. This so they try to hide their fraud and this assets. Firstly, they increase the useful life and solvent value of garbage truck to reduce the depreciation expense. Although we learned that land is not depreciated, land fee is not the same as land and it is depreciated because after a certain years of usage, you cannot use the land fee again and it doesn't have any survey value either. Uh, depreciation of the land fee is known as depletion. However, uh, they again refuse to write off the depletion, ex- depletion expense. Expense should be recognized when they are incurred and the company is not following that, which means they are viol- violating the generally accepted accounting principle. Another thing is the company needs to apply for permit to the government in order to use a land as a land fee. And sometimes the permit get rejected. The company also refused to record those unsuccessful land fee project expenses. 
Moreover, the company also misused the environmental reserve and labor security reserve to inflate the earnings. The reserve account are the money that the company set aside for specific and expected event. For example, the environmental reserve is to be used for future environmental disaster and labor security reserve is to be provided to employee if they face any a health problem because of damping work. Uh, the company used the environmental reserve to pay operational expense and overstate the income by revising the labor security reserve into income. This is how they understate the expense and overstate income and profit. Hello, Ms. Kinto. I would like to know from you why I didn't find did not discover those far. Well, as we all know, many companies go through the auditing process. So, how is the possible to be undiscovered by auditing friend? Well, for auditing, which many many corporations hire other Andersons, who is from one of the big five firms for auditing, he found errors in which many many corporations accounting record. Other recommended modifications and techniques for correcting them, however, which many many corporations officials declined to fix it. In order to cover their track, fraud or bribe others to involve in the scam. It's not surprising to find that other was included in this fraud because Jane Kenney, the CFOs of Waste Management Corporations, and other Anderson have close relationship as Jane trained others as an auditor. That is why Waste Management Corporation stakeholders were able to get away with a lot of their fraud because of who their auditor was. Wow, fantastic. Like the way they were hiding and proceeding the fraud for half a decade is so neat. They even dishonestly persuade the auditor to hide such irregularity. Right now, I'm so wondering and curious about how this will begin public. Ms. Itinser, could you please clarify to us? Yes, the scandal was discovered from July 1997 to February 1998. The large amount of special charges up to 1425 billion and the increasing operating profit make investors doubtful about the accounting data. Then, as the representative of the institutional investors, Lansman and Soro Group launched a proxy battle. They required an executive replacement for a waste management company. Finally, in the late 90s, shareholder pressure forced out the old management and brought a new set of executives. Right after that, the new management quickly realized the fraud was going on in the accountings. Oh, I see. Then how did the new CEO and management team investigate? And how did they let the public know about this issue? In order to explain Saturday and explain labor trends, in July 1997, the new CEO of Merrick Mayer announced publicly that it was launching a comprehensive review of the company's prior accounting practices. After the new CEO and management team went through the books and continued the review, in February 1998, the company acknowledged past mistakes and it restated its financial statement for the period 1992 through 1996 and the first three quarter of 1997. At the time, it was the largest restatement of earnings in corporate American history. Approximately 1.7 billion of retail earnings had overstated, and certain elements of it in cash tax expense had understated. Approximately 190 million between 1992 to 1997, the restatement was a shock to the shareholders who saw nearly 6 billion value wiped off the stock in total due to the scandal. Yeah, it sounds interesting. So, what about the Security and Aging Commission? How did they involve in exploring this scandal? Yep, in the end, the Securities and Exchange Commission investigated and discovered that the owner of the company and its former CEO, Daniel Bentrock, along with several other top executives, had even misreported the information related to the waste management plant and equipment used within the firm. The SEC investigated Anderson's role in the fraud and determined that Anderson had been involved in helping waste management hide the fraud from investors. Later, waste management corporation and the auditor were charged by SEC due to their illegal actions and fraud. Hello, Ms. Nan. Can you please explain us about how the effect of the fraud have a negative impact 
on those people who have committed all of those. Well, the negative impact on shareholders at the lost more than $6 billion when stock price fell by more than 33% due to the effect of fraud. In 1998, U.S. Airways Service Inc. waste management was bought and combined with a smaller company. Due to that, Waste management had to pay $457 million in a class action suit to shareholders. On the other side, other dozen was fined $7 million saying Addison did illegal job. And then the fraud accounting lawsuit against the former executives was resolved for $31 million in 2005. The former executive mean that a person or any individual is working before in that company. Eventually, the men were disallowed from serving as officers and directors of a public company. Oh my god, this candor is really massive. So, I just want to know how they really saw it. Did they ask for any conversation? Hey, Ms. Sajimo, do you have any response for that? Okay, governance is a set of relationships between three groups like the management, the directors, and the shareholders. Management is vastly different from any other group because it is more powerful. Also, they had made the law to forbid this kind of scandal later and the same theories and code. Shareholders studied two resolutions banning directors from accepting consulting or other fees from the company and management was not fully attuned to shareholders' interests. And they allow effective decision making and to improve the transparency of a company's performance from an ample number of dependent and independent directors in the board. Then, non-executive directors are also contributive as they attend board meetings and independent director meetings, control management performance and monitor its reporting access to operational and financial information. Well, so how do they plan and control the company from further financial frauds? Okay, finally, they are divided into two parts as like internal and external as an internal control they monitor and control independent audit bodies from inside their corporation the appropriateness of managers operation reason evilness of financial activities accuracy of financial reports and evaluation of internal control systems as an external control independent outside auditors and check any existence of wrongdoing or law violation by the corporation during audits, preventing disclosing misleading information. This is the purpose to maintain stakeholders' confidence in disclosed information. Hey, Ms. Nin, can you explain how the company is going on right now at the present? Yes, sure, I can explain to you. In current, all the waste management was investigated, charged with a suit, and then required to restate their financial statement. And then the company was able to continue operation with the help of auditor Ada Edison. And also today, the company is still serving their clients and the public with the waste service such as recycling and disposal. Although they suffer consequent because of their five years period of federal reporting, and then the company was lucky enough to recover from their losses and charge fire against them. Uh, the company is currently operating at the largest swine waste provider in North America, and the company is leading provider of integrated environmental solutions in the country, and also the company owns the largest truck fleet in the North America industry, and also provides employment to more than 50,000 people, and there has a customer base of more than 20 million people. So, the last question to conclude our shares. 
Ms. Nin, can you briefly tell us about why those flaws and scandals are important to learn? Yes, we know that ethics is very important in accounting, and uh, because of the management teams and bonus problem peer related, so this is one of their accounting weakness. And not independent of auditory firms, it can cause problem that they don't report the problem case from auditory firms and other relationships. Uh, in the future, through the the government can make policy because of that unethical behavior and innocent investor and other who are honestly invested are very at peace. And so that uh, I think fraud is very important, and they need to learn systematically due to the fact that investor are at peace case. And thank you so much, everyone, for answering all of my question. I really appreciate it. And I hope that the audience got to know something and learn something from our conversation. All right, guys. Again, thank you so much, and I will see you guys in the next episode.